Good morning, puffy eyed. I woke up with some vertigo, which makes sense because I was being jarred all day yesterday. It's kind of freaking me out a little because I'm thinking, well, you know, if I'm not 100% and that crystal's still there somewhere, I mean, geez, I wanted to hop back on the Wild West Trail, but you know, if it got back to being the way it was when I was over at Big Fork, I couldn't even like walk. And I'm not gonna be like in the middle of the woods having that disability. That would really scare me. I don't know what to do. Let me show you this campground. It's a circle. Then there's all these little skinny trails that run to the bathroom. Look how far apart the campsites are from each other. There's their picnic table. And here's my picnic table. Every site has a really awesome parking slot. If you're pulling stuff or even if you have multiple cars, and here's where I put my tent, but where I would have put my tent had a cyclist not have gotten there a little bit before me is over at this site. It seems as though each spot has a few spots for a tent. This is the only site that's super open and has the water right in your backyard. Look at this water, even coming up to the shore. It's crystal clear. Pretty amazing. And then there was a guy here last night. He actually did the tour divide, I think in 2016. He had to bail out because he got sick just from being so dirty. Black stuff was coming out of his bum. He walked into the hospital and they immediately took care of him. And it wasn't because of food or water. It was just that he was not changing his clothes or rinsing them or anything. I was telling about my jarring experience on the road. He said, yeah, I kind of sucked, but it, well, it wasn't as bad for him as it was for me. And he asked what kind of bike I had. He's like, well, that like bike was made for the Great Divide, my salsa cutthroat. I'm like, yeah, I know. How much air do you have? And I said 50 in the back and 40 in the front because that's what I read I should have with my packs and stuff. And he said, no. You need to let air out. That's why you're having such a jar, extra jarring experience. He has 28 in his tires. And he was saying that's the thing about tubeless is you don't have to put as much air in them. And I'm like, yeah, but this is what I read. This is the one situation where I actually read one person's bike packers blog. I actually didn't research the information, which is not like me. I will be able to see the proper PSI that I'm gonna release. I was just riding on 40, but I started out with 50. Let's see if it feels any different. Every time I like look into the woods, the deer is out there just staring at me. Hi, beautiful lady. You look kind of skinny. She's not coming up to me for food or anything. She's the camp host. <laughs> when you come in, she checks. Everyone's here. Okay. You're not leaving any trash. Oh, look, there's a little orange thing on the ground. I wonder if Mr. Mouse was having a little investigation last night. Is that a little poopy? I just looked down at my canes, my oh so amazing canes, and this is all attached here. And this one is all attached here. My right foot is completely coming apart. And these are my only cycling shoes because one of my high five tens fell off my pack a while back. I am gonna use my electrical tape and tape them. Just like new. 11.35, 11.35, and I'm just getting out of here. Granted, I didn't crawl out of my tent till nine. Had to filter water, rolling the tent, rolling the rain fly, rolling the ground sheet, rolling your bed, rolling your sleeping bag, rolling your clothes, trying to stuff them back in these sacks. This goes here, and this goes in the center pack, and this goes in the green on the front forks, and then you gotta compress that down. In these bare areas, I have to take all the food out of my frame pack. You have to take your toiletries out and then put it into the bare lockers. That is my least favorite part of this trip. The pannier style or the basket on the front like that guy had in Missoula. It would really change my experience. We're in Tuchuk campground. I am the only person here with camp host. I don't know where camp host went. a loud snap. Remember I was showing you literally just, I think it was yesterday. This unhooked, even though I had it in there really tight, but that's how choppy this road is. Can you see all these just 
I mean, this isn't even that bad of a section. Look at how strong my spokes are. It bent the hook. I can't believe my spoke didn't pop off. I mean, these are tight suckers. Gosh, it scared me. And these are so strong, these clips. It confirms that when it's so jarring, it's not a good design then, even though the bag has been great. I mean, imagine if that happened coming downhill and it did pull your spoke or it threw you over the handlebars. That's a flawed design. I don't know if you can see it. All it's doing is keeping this bag, like if you stuff it tight underneath, probably so it doesn't drop down to your, to your tire. That's all it's doing because it's just this hook right here that it goes through. I'm guessing the end round part needs to be sharper or it just needs to be a different design because I really had this in here and I had this tight and everything. Wow, that's fucked up. I have to share this with you. As you can see, a headwind kicked in and that road just continued to suck. There's so much gravel and slippage. You're pedaling over rock and you're on these little miniature climbs in between. I would like my elevation to include all the rocks I had to go up. Anyways, a really handsome, I'm gonna use the word hot guy, <laughs> was coming. So I just came up over the climb. It was Steve and the wind just kicked in. It was gray and I'm like, fuck. And you could see he was slowing down <laughs> to talk and all I could say was, this road sucks. <laughs> and he burst out laughing and he said, you're almost at the top. Being a single female, be awesome to meet a cyclist so I really should snag whatever opportunities that I have when I see a handsome dude on the trail. Anyway, I start laughing. Oh, after I said that, I was like, <laughs> such a pessimist. If you only knew I'm a very optimistic, happy-go-lucky girl, but I probably just came out across as this whiny bitch. This road sucks. I don't even think I said hello. <laughs> Anyways, at least it made him laugh. We're in a different national park now. I for It starts with a K. <laughs> I think it has two O's in it. I'm not gonna attempt to pronounce it, but look what's ahead. We get to go down, down, down. That's where we came from, and 8.2 miles later, you will be shouting, hallelujah, because it's the end of the shit road that went on for the last day and a half. I've done a fair amount of car camping. I felt I would have seen more in a car. You're so focused on the road that you're not even looking around. When it's this bad, it's this jarring. There are embedded rocks. There's a ton of them, nonstop. I had my vertigo this morning when I woke up from yesterday's ride. It triggered it. It's drop bar, which physically I'm a little bit more bent over because I have to have my hands by the brakes versus you know on a mountain bike you're right there it's a little more stable so maybe it would have physically also felt different because it would have put me a little bit more in the upright position all this stuff is subjective that i say you could come on this this section and go i don't know what naomi was talking about but i find that really hard to believe you're going to notice the terrible road but it might not affect you mentally or physically like it affected me i don't like sharing information to like deter you from doing something you have to find out for yourself all i can do is this was my experience i absolutely hated this road and i'll never ever do it again in my life <laughs> but i'm glad i did it because now i know what this part of the united states in montana looks like <laughs> camp host followed us these kind people are showing me what huckleberries look like because they've been huckleberry picking if you can't tell by her hand oh they really do look like a blueberry and they're yeah. big Taste them. yeah okay yeah. they're good let me just say whee! i don't even want to pedal i want to enjoy this downhill so much i don't want it to be over dumped out of from our awesome downhill and I saw some men over there fly fishing it's called Grave Creek you can freeze the screen and read it it's kind of interesting for some perspective we were way up in there came down into Eureka that's the historical village here's city hall or town hall that I'm gonna ask about camping and there's the cute little downtown drag 
And of course I just left the gas station for gummy fish. The guy working at the gas station said, yeah, they're open. They close at two. See, people hanging out at the park could be like drug dealers and stuff like this guy sitting here in his van. When I called RV park, said he could park at the historical village. Well, if the museum's open, I can ask them. It would be a very cute place to sleep. I'm gonna call the police department. Darn it, she said you can't camp here, you have to go over to the park. And I asked her if they had a high theft rate because there were so many cameras in the gas station. It was like almost obnoxious. It's a deal of drug dealers hanging out in the park and selling crack. She said, no, we've never had a problem, so okay. Oh my gosh, you never see teeter-totters. I love teeter-totters. When you were a kid, the one person would always slam on the ground to pop the other person in the air. And this is on the Great Divide. This is the tobacco road spit out if you took the tobacco road, which runs parallel to the freeway. I didn't mind the freeway. Interesting. Oh, look, I can even grab a book and read while I'm hanging out. I was gonna go closer to the main road for theft reasons to deter people, but this was such a pretty spot. And I thought I can crawl down here and rinse off in the morning or wash some clothes tomorrow. I'm not sure really what I'm doing. I'm gonna lock my bike to this tree so it's right next to me. I was tempted to lock it around this bench, but I just want it right next to my tent and it's gonna be right next to my head. So I specifically placed where I'm sleeping, my head's right there so I would hear anybody tinkering. And I'll hang stuff on my bike so it makes noise. The downtown looks really cute. Looks like kind of deserted though, but like authentic downtown. And go eat at a restaurant. The gas station food here is so expensive. I mean, wow, is it overpriced. There's no fire pits here, which makes sense, but I could go to the gas station. I could microwave water and I could just make my noodles and stuff. I'd like to actually have breakfast someplace because I'm more of a breakfast person. The other option is to order pizza and have it delivered at the picnic bench, which would be kind of fun. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I guess that's the point of this video. I don't know what I'm doing once again. <laughs> once again, thinking about food. This is Victor. Hello. I just met him in the parking lot. And then we walked up the road to this pizza joint and I was waiting for my phone to charge and upload and he gives me this story because I'm annoyed that it's taking so long and he says, The Hazda tribe in Tanzania, they hunt for six hours to get their food, so it could be worse. <laughs> I just walked in this store. I used to eat these a ton when I was younger. They had them in all the gas stations and they don't anymore. And they have them in Eureka, Montana. My new friend here is telling me stories we're having chats about car camping because that is his car. And he rigged it and you're the first car camper that actually has like a regular sized car. I'm glad you came up to me and said hello. This is how he's surviving car camping. For two months, I've been on the road. I'm from El Paso, Texas. That's where I started my journey and I just went up through New Mexico, uh, Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana. I work for this company that delivers groceries. So in a, every big city, I've stopped and I've done some work there that's put some money in my pocket. So really like the money I've been using on gas and food, kind of recuperating along the way. Showering in rivers, every chance I get. My dad has a um, international membership at Planet Fitness. I use his card to take showers at the Planet Fitness because I look just like him, so they can't really tell if, if I have a mask on too, right? In Missoula, I took a, a free jujitsu class. <laughs> I made a little frame out of wood and I put a sleeping pad in there and like I sleep just like if I was at home. I thought you'd be tired of it, what, after a week? Yeah. And it's been two months? I don't know if I'm gonna be able to go back to living in an apartment after this. <laughs> <laughs> and you're 32? 31. Probably think that like I'm crazy living out of that. Sorry for the mess. Yeah, sorry for the mess. That's what people say when they come over to someone's home. That's great that you just said that coming to your car. Here's the the oh, bed. Interesting. Oh wow, you even have like a cardboard shade to like pr like hide yourself. Yeah, I cover the windows so like nobody can see inside and no okay. light and no light can get in. This is like the little thing I built to like it's like a frame for the bed. He's got his cooler. I took right. the back seat and the passenger seat. That is so smart. These just go here. You cut and foot. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, and I usually tape it so okay. like it stays in place, but it looks like I just have blacked out windows. Oh, it does, because they're already tinted. Interesting, that was a brilliant idea. Well, you were an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. No and I'll stay in touch, All okay? Right, totally. All right, sweet dreams. All right, you too. Yeah. 
my god, I ate this whole pizza, and by the way, it was absolutely delicious. It was $10, and it was just out of this world. Probably one of the best pizzas I've ever had. I'm not kidding. By the way, this is awesome. This color, toasted coconut. And now I have to go over to my home. I'm sleeping in the city park. I love it. I've never done that before. I left stuff on the picnic table because it kind of gives you the illusion that I'm in the, you know, I'm there. Look, we have deer. I'm gonna crawl in my tent, I'm gonna get all cozy, and I'm gonna eat some sugar. <laughs> Those are my plans. All right, good night. <laughs>